is the empty set, which is a subset of R, and is actually a subset of every set, bounded from above or below? Does it have a least upper bound or a greatest lower bound? Now, in this video, we will first prove whether it has an upper bound or not, so upper bound, and then next we'll prove whether it has a least upper bound, sometimes also known as supremum, or sup for short. So, and I'll leave the proofs of whether it has a lower bound and whether it has a greatest lower bound up to the viewer, because those proofs are, I claim that those proofs are very, very similar arguments to what I'm about to show here for proving whether it has an upper bound or not, and whether it has a least upper bound or not. Now, on to the proof. So, f when the empty set is involved, I usually like to approach my investigation to problems involving the empty set with um, a proof by contradiction. So, so let's, let's suppose, let's suppose that the empty set is not bounded from above. Let's suppose that it's not bounded from above. Now, um, if it's not bounded from above, well, what does that mean? So let's first think of what does it mean for a set to be bounded from above. So if, if the empty set is, is bounded from above, then that implies, that implies that there exists a u in the real numbers such that s is strictly less than or equal to u for all, this is the sign for for all, s in the empty set. Now, now, so suppose that the empty set does not have an upper bound. Upper bound. Now, this implies, this implies, so if, if, if the empty set does not have an upper bound, then this implies for every, for every, or for any, for each, this is the sign for for every, or for any, or for each, this upside down A, for every A in the real numbers, there exists an S in the empty set such that S is strictly greater than A. So what this is saying is if I, no matter what, oh, excuse me, no matter what A I choose in the real numbers, no matter what A I choose, I'm always going to be able to find an S in the empty set such that S is strictly greater than the A that I choose. So we can make the elements in the empty set arbitrarily large. But look at what this does. I'm going to say right here, but the empty set doesn't have any elements. So there can't possibly be an S in the empty set such that S is strictly greater than A. So this implies a contradiction. That is to say, if we were to suppose that the empty set does not have an upper bound, then we arrive at a contradiction. So therefore, the empty set must have an upper bound. Now, before we go into step two, where we prove that the empty set or where we, where we determine if the empty set has a least upper bound or not, we're going to prove that every element in the real numbers is an upper bound for the empty set. So now, we, so claim, claim every A and R is an upper bound for the empty set. 
I should say for the empty set. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm gonna approach this investigation of whether this claim is true or not via a proof by contradiction. So suppose, suppose that there exists, or no, rather, suppose that for some A in R, A is not an upper bound, upper bound. A is not an upper bound for the empty set. So it looks like I'm running out of room here, so I'm gonna clear the board and we're gonna go back to the top. So let me rewrite that. So suppose there exists an A in the real numbers such that A is not, is not an upper bound. for the empty set. Well, then this implies, this implies that there exists an S in the empty set such that S is strictly greater than A. Now, again, like we did before, this is a contradiction. This is a contradiction. Why? Because we just supposed that there was an S in the empty set. And it's a contradiction since the empty set has no elements. Thus, thus, there cannot, there cannot exist an A an A in the real numbers, such that A is not an upper bound, is not an upper bound for the empty set, which is the same as saying, if there cannot exist an, an element in the real numbers such that that element is not an upper bound for the, for the empty set, then that implies that every every element in the real numbers is an upper bound, is an upper bound for the empty set. Now, we can use this, we can leverage what we just proved. What, what did we just prove? We just proved that, let me change colors here, we just proved that every a and R is an upper bound, upper bound for the empty set. Now, we're going to leverage this property. We're going to leverage this property that we just proved to prove that whether, or to determine whether the empty set has a least upper bound or not. So, claim the least up, or excuse me, the empty set, the empty set has no least upper bound. So we're going to determine if this claim is true or not. So now, suppose, suppose that, again, I'm going to approach this by contradiction. That's usually my tactic of investigation when the empty set is involved in a particular problem or proof. I'm going to approach this via contradiction. So suppose that the empty set does have a least upper bound. Then this implies, this implies that there exists an A in R such that for all S in the empty set, S is less than or equal to A, that's one, and two, for any, for any upper bound, 
upper bound for any upper bound of the empty set, A is strictly less than or equal to. So for any upper bound, let's say, let's call it U, for any upper bound U of the empty set, A will be less than or equal to U. It is, that is to say, it is the least of all of the upper bounds. Take the, if you take the set of all upper bounds of the empty set, then A is the minimum of that set. So now, let's try to derive a contradiction. Suppose that the empty set does have a least upper bound, and that means there exists an A and R such that for all S in the empty set, S is less than or equal to A, and for all upper bounds U of the empty set, a is less than or equal to u. Now, consider the element. Let's consider, let's consider the element a minus 1. Or rather, let's even consider, consider any element in R, any element, let's call it V in R, such that V is strictly less than A. Well, since V is in R, and since we just proved before that every element in R is an upper bound of the empty set, then that implies that V is an upper bound upper bound of the empty set. But look at this. Look at this. This contradicts the fact that this contradicts this number two fact. This contradicts this statement right here. That for all upper bounds u of the empty set, a is less than or equal to u. We just found a v. We just found a v that is strictly less than a. But A is supposed to be less than or equal to all upper bounds of the empty set. So therefore, A can't possibly be an, a least upper bound because we were able to find an upper bound that was smaller than A. We just found, we just found an upper bound, an upper bound of the empty set that smaller, that's smaller than A. But this is a contradiction. But A is supposed to be, supposed to be the least upper bound, the least upper bound. Thus, a contradiction. And therefore, since we arrive at a contradiction by supposing that the empty set has a least upper bound, since that supposition leads to a contradiction, therefore the empty set must not have a least upper bound.